words matter. In our tradition, God created the world with speech, uttering, let there be light, and there was light. God revealed wisdom to us in a text, the Torah, and we haven't stopped talking about it since. And these high holy days, with their process of tshuva, a return to our better selves, requires that we speak our failures and errors in order to truly acknowledge them on our journey toward change. And so, it is painfully ironic that when encountering death, the passing of our loved ones or those of our friends and neighbors, we are often at a loss for words. The longing to express feelings of support and consolation resounds within us, but words often fail us. We feel that we must say something profound in the face of grief, or we fear saying the wrong thing that it might trigger further pain, or we don't want to burden mourners with our own struggles with loss. This tension between a longing to bring the healing and holy power of words to such a moment and our reticence and discomfort in doing so is a truly vexing struggle for so many of us. In his poignant and painful book, Finding the Words, Colin Campbell recounts his journey in the aftermath of the unimaginably tragic loss of his two teen children, Ruby and Hart, when his family was T-boned by a drunk driver. It is an account as excruciating as it is inspiring. And yet, Campbell transforms his overwhelming sadness, rage, and despair into a source of insight, wisdom, and practical responses for both those who grieve and those who seek to comfort them. He notes early on how so many who reached out to him shared the very common refrain, there are no words. While understandable on some level in that such a monumental loss cannot be summed or quelled by a few choice words, Campbell shares how patently unhelpful this response felt to him. He conveys how on that terrible night in the hospital, the ICU doctor who was with them as they said goodbye to their lifeless children did not leave them in sadness and solitude. Rather, she sat them down in a private room and asked, quote, tell me about your children. Campbell shared, quote, it gave us a moment of purpose in our darkest hour. It is so strange how potent words can be in grief. So often in our culture, grief is less a process than an affliction, less a healthy purging than an embarrassing burden. And though more mournful words can call out and call up our natural expression of pain, for many, this seems to be indulgent or a sign of weakness or even a pathology that needs to be stoically born or pharmaceutically remedied. Campbell not only embraces the pain of grief leaning into it with vigor and transparency. But his book itself is both a catharsis and a curriculum, a form of release and a memorialization of his children, a selfless act to invite vulnerability, to share harder knowledge, and to craft a legacy of love and loss to honor those taken from him. Campbell's wife is Jewish and they raise their children in a synagogue community. And so he is appreciative of Jewish structures and time and place and the power of communal witness and support that is one of the most remarkable features of our tradition's approach to death, loss, and mourning. It is a gift and a treasury that we Jews possess but often take for granted. Or more troublingly, we neglect it when we most often need it. 
for the presence of community during the most intensive moments of Shiva and the words we share only after the bereaved have engaged us can break through the defenses of denial and the aversion to an outpouring of feeling so common in our wider culture. And the exalting words of the Kaddish Yatom, the mourner's Kaddish prayer, affirm our faith in a God who has bequeathed to us two precious gifts, the opportunity to live a purposeful life and the power of memory to render such a life immortal. The most elemental words that best reflect who we are as people are our names. The names we're given, the names we earn, and the names by which we are remembered. The Israeli poet Zelda captured the power of names as healing words of memory in her famous poem, Each of Us Has a Name. Each of us has a name given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our sins and given by our longing. Each of us has a name given by our enemies and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by our death. May we never cease to name and speak and express our thoughts and feelings with words that ushered in the first act of creation and words that are our ongoing acts of creation. And let us say, Amen. <laughs>